Hi, this is Mariah from Unpacking Disability, and I am here today to continue the disability benefits thread. And um, last time we were talking about what is a disability benefits planner. And today I just wanted to continue with that in how to find a disability benefits planner. And before I continue with this, I just want to slip in this disclaimer that none of us here at Unpacking Disability are disability benefit specialists. So what we're doing is we are taking personal information, lived information and um, research and we're coupling them and we're presenting them. But we are, we are not experts in this, so be aware. Um, so saying, um, let's move on into um, these thoughts on how to find a disability benefits planner. Um, so to recap, a disability benefits planner is a trained professional who helps you um, understand and figure out, navigate your disability benefits, your unemployment, and SSI, SSDI, um, things like marriage with your disability benefits, your ABLE account, your, not your ABLE account, but just the ABLE process special needs trust, they're not experts in special needs trust, but they can help understand that. Medicaid, Medicare, and so forth. So a good disability benefits planner is worth their weight in gold. And you know what else? They're really hard to find. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like there are these elusive leprechauns hiding behind rainbows that only exit the sky behind particular social security back alleys or something. Um, I'm probably making it harder than it needs to be. I know that there are clear ways to find disability benefits planners. And this is what I know about how to find one. So I think it boils down to these four things. One, WIPA, two, Center for Independent Living, three, protection and advocacy, p &A, and four, word of mouth. So let's just talk about that in a little more detail. So the work incentives, planning and advocacy, WIPA, work incentives, planning and advocacy, better known as WIPA, hails from the Social Security Administration. I'm totally reading this, you guys, okay. WEPA programs are paid for by Social Security, and the point of WEPA programs are to, in the words of Social Security, the goal of the Work Incentives Planning and Assistance Program is to enable beneficiaries with disabilities to receive accurate information and use that information to make a successful transition to work. All right. Project has community work incentives coordinators. They get their own acronym, CWIC, who will provide in depth counseling about benefits and the effective work on those benefits, conduct outreach efforts to beneficiaries of SSI, SSDI, and their families who are potentially eligible to participate in federal or state work incentives programs and work in cooperation with federal, state, and private agencies and nonprofit organizations that serve SSI and SSDI beneficiaries with disabilities. So yeah, that's straight out of the Social Security website. And it sounds great, right? I mean, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around, but it sounds great. <laughs> I mean, I want to weep a coordinator on my side. But remember that those are employment focused. So if you want a benefits planner to help you figure out how marriage and your benefits work or the interaction with your Medicaid and SSI, then weep a coordinators won't be very helpful. Also remember to do your research on them. They're human and they can still make mistakes. So try not to have their mistakes be on your back. And a side note, 
the WIPA coordinators receive their training through Virginia Commonwealth University. I thought that was interesting and their website was pretty interesting. So if you go to my blog post, I have all the links in there. It's worth checking out. So next is Center for Independent Living. These are hubs of disability community, connection, resources, and you can find which is close to you by Googling your city name plus independent living center. So your city name plus independent living center. You, you should also try the National Council for Independent Living database. I have the link in the blog post on that, but it's, it's really comprehensive. My local CIL, the Center for Independent Living here in my town is heart stoppingly awful. Like they're so bad that I'm willing to be public about this even when I literally live on an island and I will likely run into people from there at the grocery store. But other CILs are amazing, really truly living up to the mission of what a CIL is supposed to be and do. So check out your local CIL, see what line they follow and what resources they have by way of disability benefits planners. That would really be um, my first step to be honest, because if you have a great local CIL, you can just stop right there, they're great. Um, then protection and advocacy, PNA. Every state has a PNA, a Pro protection and advocacy office. Um, and the PNA has a program called Protection and Advocacy for Beneficiaries of Social Security. Why do they have to make these names so long? And that has an acronym too, P-A-B-S-S, B-S-S. <laughs> Anyway, this program can, among other things, help with disability benefits planning as it relates to returning to work or engaging in work. So again, they're really work oriented. Figuring out reasonable accommodations, disability discrimination and advocacy, career development, referrals to voc rehab and or other agencies. So they're, again, just like WEPA, they're really employment focused. Word of mouth, I'm sorry, my cat's walking in front of me right now. Okay, word of mouth, disability network, and this is gonna take you far as your disability networks are fantastic sources of information on disability benefits planners, including who's good and who is not. I have a long post that's linked in the blog post on disability related Facebook groups. There's a lot of disability movers and shakers on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. So reach out, search, connect. You wanna be connecting with the greater disability community anyway. If you haven't done it already, this is a great excuse to start. If you needed an excuse to start, it's, it's a good one. So once you have your disability benefits planner, make sure to do your research on them. And as I what is their reputation in the local disability networks? Have you seen them on LinkedIn? Poke around online, see their connections. Did you meet and do an interview with them? You wanna find out where their certification is from or if they have certification, but hey, no judgment if they don't because you know some of the most amazing planners do not have certification and some really awful planners do have certification. So, you know, just suss it out. It's a good question to ask. Um, how long have they been working as a disability benefits planner? Um, how many clients have they successfully helped? In what degree? What complexity? Do they have testimonials? So these, these are all, you know, worth asking. I, you know, I know that I was highly recommended one planner by one person a while ago. And when I met with this person, they um, were basically gonna try to figure out their planning skills or apply their planning skills um, on my back. And that really um, alarmed me, you know? It, so that's really a, an important question to ask is how long have they been doing this? How many people have they really helped? Um, 
what types of cases have they worked with? How complex? So it's really, really important. And I know all of this is potentially really tedious and time consuming and tiresome, but it is so worth it because if you find a good disability benefits planner, they can really help you or your child or your family navigate all of this and make sense of it all and really start to plan out your, your future and help you build more financial security, which is so lacking in so many of us with disabilities. So that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this and please um, circle around to the blog post to subscribe for this particular series on social security, Medicare, Medicaid, we're going to get into all of it. So, so yeah, we'll see you later.